praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for victory over death. We thank the Lord for the victory that Christ wrought for us through the cross. And he rose up from the grave on the third day. And he reigns in majesty. He reigns in majesty. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are welcome to today's prophetic prayer meeting. Let's just begin by giving God praise as we trust God for a powerful time in his presence. Father, we worship your holy name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We say, blessed be your name, O Lord. Thou alone are worthy of our praise, O Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the cross. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of Christ. Thank you, Father. Father, we worship you. We give you all the praise. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim and Adonai. Age to age, you're still the same. By the power of your name, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim and Adonai, I will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. Oh, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim and Adonai, age to age are still the same, by the power of your name, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim and Adonai, I will praise and lift you high. El Shaddai, oh, you came from heaven to earth to show us the way from the earth to the cross. My debt you paid, oh, from the cross to the grave, and from the grave to the sky, oh, Lord, I lift your name. On high, oh, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt you paid, oh, from the cross to the grave, and 
from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, like a rose trampled on the ground, you took the fall. Father, because of me and thought of me, above all, it's because of the gift of Christ. That is why we are here today. That's why we can boldly approach God and say, our Father, Abba, Father. That is why we can boldly come before the throne of grace to obtain mercy in time of need. Let's just worship this God. Let's just thank him for the gift of his son. Oh, Father, we are here to worship you. We are here to worship you. We thank you for the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. No more, no longer do we mourn, but now we rejoice because he arose on the third day and now he reigns in majesty forever and ever. Oh, Father, Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, the one who died and rose for us because of our sins. He came in human form. He came in human form. He came to dwell amongst us. Ah, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of your son, for the gift of Christ. We say thank you. We say thank you so that we may boldly come before you, that we can now come before you, that we do not, we no, we no longer need any intermediaries that we can now come before you oh that when you see us you see Jesus that even as we come you see us you see Jesus because he says these ones I have died for these are the ones that I gave my life for father we thank you Lord we thank you thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus Thank you for the gift of Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. La no kasante kado sate akaba sheke teke seke teke. Mana no kuza kabo sante ya. We are grateful, Lord Jesus. How can we thank you enough for dying on the cross of Calvary for our sins that we may be reunited with the Father? Oh, all we like sheep have gone astray, but you came and you died for us and you rose again because that is not the end of the story we say thank you lord jesus thank you father we are grateful we are grateful we are grateful we are grateful oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow, no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus, oh what can wash away my sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as I know 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, this is all my joy and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, this is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You know, what greater love, what greater love do you know? What greater love have you experienced that a man would lay down his life for his friends? Not even while we were yet enemies of Christ, while we were yet enemies of God, Jesus laid down his life for us that we may be reunited, that we may be reunited, that we can boldly come before the throne of grace to obtain mercy. What manner of love is this? What manner of love is this? That we may know this love, that we may experience this love, that we may know this love, that we may know this love. Oh Lord, we thank you for your love. 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 What manner of love is this? What manner of love is this? What manner of love is this? Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Even as we go on in this prayer meeting this evening, I would like us to remember those that are not saved, those that are going their own way, those that are doing things that, that do not give glory to God, even those that, that have experienced this before, that have maybe known Christ, they've heard of Christ, before, but they've, they are, their hearts have, have just been hardened and they've refused to let Christ in. Let's pray. Let's pray for them even as we go along in this prayer meeting that God would touch their heart, that through this, this, this weekend of, of the resurrection, the death, as we remember the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus, that, that they too will remember Christ, that he would touch their heart, that they would, they would have an encounter with him. Father, we are praying for those that do not yet know you, even in our families, maybe those that have known you before or that have heard of you but have not fully given their lives to you. But that we experience this love, this love, this love, this love that, oh, what, what manner of love is this that a man would lay down his life for even his enemies? What manner of love is this? That day we experience this love, Lord Jesus. That day we experience this love that those that are going astray will come back to you. Those that are going astray will come back to you. Maleke si katara gabo shantea. Ika kaka soto kobo si katea. Ane keregebo sata. Maleke sate kebo sata. Nanano shata. Lakota ni gabo suta. Nanananana. But we thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. That we thank you that we are recipients of this love. We thank you that we are recipients of this love. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Masante kabo suta ne kebo su kote karabo shata. Hey, kabo sute de gebo se keta ne ke de gebo sata. Ah, le nano sakandoria. Hey, kabashoto. Ah, ne ke sakata kata kate kabo. There's no shadow you will light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. 
He keeps coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. Oh, there's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. Hey, there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, there's no shadow he won't light up, mountain he won't climb up, coming after me. Hey, oh, there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Hey, oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the ninety-nine. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Thank you, Lord, for lavishing your love on us. Though it looks as if it's reckless that you lavish your love on us, even when we do not even love you back, but you keep lavishing your love on us. You keep leaving the 99 and looking for that one lost sheep. Oh, you keep sweeping under the bed and sweeping on the corners of the room just to get that lost coin. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love, for you love us too much. Thank you for your excess love, Lord Jesus us that you lavish on us behold what manner of love the father has given unto us that we may be called the sons of God behold what manner of love thank you for your love Lord Jesus we thank you we thank you Lord Jesus we thank you for your love 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 oh Oh, how he loves us oh. for your love. Thank you, Lord, 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 for your love. Thank you, Lord,
Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your love, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. Let's just thank God again for his love. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you for your love. Now that love may begin to permeate the hearts of men and women, even in this gathering tonight. That that love may begin to permeate the hearts of boys and girls, even on the streets tonight. Now that love may begin to permeate the hearts of people, people that are hungry and they are thirsty and they do not know what to do. They do not know where to go. Let that love flow through this town, this city, city, this nation. Let your love, let your love flow. Let your love flow. Thank you, Lord, for your love. 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 Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your love. He loves. He is jealous for me. Lost like a hurricane, I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his love and mercy. And all of a sudden, I am unaware of these afflictions, embraced by glory. And I realize, oh, how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. Oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us. He loves us Oh, how he loves me Oh, how he loves you Oh, how he loves you Thank you for loving me too much. Malakabaso na ne na no. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Anakale masate na no na nea. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh, ah, I say thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh, I la la do satanea. Hey, thank you for loving me too much. Oh. Somebody needs to thank God for his love. Because where would you have been today if not for his love that keeps chasing after you? That keeps chasing after you. Thank you for loving me too much. Hey, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh, thank you for loving me thank you for loving me too much
you. Hey, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Thank you for loving me too much. Thank you for loving me too much. Oh, oh, I say thank you for loving me too much. Oh, oh thank you for loving me too much. loving me too much oh thank you lord jesus we thank you lord jesus for loving us too much oh thank you for loving us too much thank you for loving us too much thank you for loving us too much it's because of his love that is making you go through that process it's because of his love that he wants to redeem his redemptive love not love not love that you just say i love you and and and, and, and things just go on the way the way you want them to no but his love is redemptive his love is unconditional his love is so amazing oh thank you for loving us too much oh hey, thank you for loving us thank you for loving us too much thank you for loving us too much oh thank you for loving us too much Thank you for loving us too much. Oh. Hey, thank you for loving us too much. Oh. Thank you for loving us too much. Oh. Thank you for loving us too much. Oh. Hey, thank you for loving us too much. Oh, and then I know and then I thank you for loving us too much oh let the world feel your love lord jesus hey, thank you for loving us too much oh hey, you're amazing amazing thank you for loving us too much oh hey, your love is amazing thank you for loving us too much oh hey, unconditional love unconditional love oh thank you for loving us too much oh thank you lord jesus Thank you, Father, for your love. 
your unconditional love, your redemptive love, your amazing love, your unmatched love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. That we will feel that love even in this season. And those around us, those in the streets will feel your love, Lord Jesus. May we feel your love this season. May we know your love truly. For in Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen. Once again, we are welcome to today's prophetic prayer meeting. We trust God that it's going to be a powerful one. I would like to invite the man of God that will be taking us today in the person of Prophet Hope Adasi. He has been a blessing to us in this community and we pray, we trust God to use him. Let's just say a quick word of prayer for the man of God before he comes up. Father, we commit your servant into your hands this evening. We pray that, oh, even as you use him, you will use him powerfully, oh, Lord, to preach your word, to minister to people. That, oh, Father, that your love will be felt even in your word that is coming forth with power this evening. That your name and your name alone will be glorified. That you, oh God, that he may decrease while you increase in him, in Jesus' name. That you will use him powerfully and mightily unto the glory of your name. And that you will take the glory. You get the glory, you get the praise, and you get the honor, oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. You are welcome, sir. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you, everyone that um, is connected with us. Greatest honor, you know, that the Lord has done to us as his people. And we are grateful. It is because of the sacrifice that we are all here today. And I want to say a big thank you, Sister Diane. I want to thank you, Brother Paul, for this, um, the honor you've done to me to share the word of God with us today. And I believe that the Lord has something to say to us. You know, there are announcements that heaven is making in this season. The handwriting is clearly on the wall that we are in a very prophetic season. It's not a coincidence. And there are no coincidences in the realm of the Spirit. And even the theme of today, even as God Savan declared it last week, you know, um, on um, Monday when we were having our meeting, he said, Passover, Passover. And that's what we'll be looking at today. I believe that the Lord is set to do something very great. And I pray that he will unlock our senses, that we'll be able to align with what the Spirit of God is doing. And that the Word of God will fall in pleasant places in our hearts. Um, Father, we thank you for this opportunity again. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. We ask, O oh God, that your word will be understood. Your word will be simple. Lord, we pray that your word will bear fruits in our life. You will confirm your word with signs and wonders. And Lord, by this word, we will move from this level to the next level that you are declaring. Even as you are declared, it's an open door. You have set an open door before us. Lord, we thank you for this great and effectual door. We receive grace to step in. We transit from where we used to be to where you are taking us to. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now, we'll begin with looking at, um, I just titled it Passover. And we're going to be looking at Passover from scriptures beginning from the very first Passover, which is in Exodus chapter 12. You know, we know the story of Israel in Egypt and how God began to rain down the plagues. In order to bring Israel out of Egypt, God began to judge all the gods of Egypt. And eventually, God decided that there will be one last plague. And to bring this, which is the plague, as we know, the plague of the firstborn sons. And to bring about this plague, God began to tell Israel that there is a feast you are going to keep. And we see in Exodus chapter 12, and I'll read from verse 1, Exodus chapter 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of, the of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let, them, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make 
your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the house, houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head, with his legs, and with the, the potenance thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins gathered, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Praise the Lord. Now, we see here the very first time that the Passover is mentioned by the Lord. This is the feast that the Lord used in bringing Israel out of Egypt. And, you know, to understand the Old Testament, we see every feast in the Old Testament as a shadow, a pointer to the substance in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, they used a lamb. And by this feast of Passover, Israel was brought out of Egypt, the bondage of Egypt. It marked the end of bondage in Egypt. And the beginning of journey, freedom, out of Egypt into the dealings in the wilderness. Now, as I began to look at Passover, different Passover celebrations in the Bible, I began to see that Passover became significant seasons. Passover began to mark the end of major dealings and the beginning of new ones. They marked, they became like transitions from the Old Testament to the New Testament. They became like markers of the divine move of God. And God instituted Passover. He said it must be done perpetually. It will never end from generation to generation. And as we're going to begin to see, we'll see certain things God began to do in the life of Israel. And the children of Israel, they were like a shadow. And today, believers, we are like the substance. We are the ones that those feasts and festivals, we are the ones that the, the true meaning. You know, the Bible says that... Uh, the current Israel, nation of Israel, is in bondage. But the true Israel is the church. And we are the ones that the blood of the Lamb was washed with. And in this true Israel, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. There's neither male nor female. Praise God. And as we look at here, the very first thing we notice is that when this feast was celebrated, it marked the end of captivity. So Passover is a season when captivities end. Long-lasting captivities. Captivities that people have given up. It can be like a, a an illness, a disease, a family issue that has gone from generation to generation. It's a season when God draws the line and says, this is the end. And God takes the ultimate sacrifice, takes a blow, a lamb without spot. Now, in the New Old Testament, it was a shadow. It was just a lamb. But in the New Testament, as we know, is the lamb of God. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I had someone, you know, shine about the research that they discovered. You know, some Christians have been kind of the research. They discovered that Good Friday, Easter, the season of Easter is when they have the highest number of people converting to Christianity yearly, globally. Every time, this season, there's something about this season. This season is not ordinary. It's a season that God has marked out to begin to do major things in the life of his people. So the first thing we see here, we see the Passover. Israel ends this captivity in, 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 in uh, what do you call it, in Egypt, and they begin to move into the wilderness. Praise the Lord. And then we look at another time when Passover is celebrated. Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5 from verse 10. Joshua, the book of Joshua chapter 5 from verse 10. In Joshua chapter 5 from verse 10, the children of Israel have gone through the wilderness. You know, the, this first Passover marks the end of Egypt, bondage, the beginning of wilderness journeys. And for 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness. Moses and many of them died in the wilderness. Only two that left with them, you know, beginning from the ages 20 and above. 
We are now surviving. Joshua and Caleb and the ones, the next generation. And in this place, they are close to Jericho. And they've just crossed the Jordan. God begins to speak to them. And there is a Passover held here. Joshua chapter 5 from verse 10. He says, And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at evening in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover on living cakes and patch corn in the self same day. Verse 12, And the manna ceased on the moor after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had they, the children of Israel, manna anymore, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Praise God. We also see what begins to happen. Passover becomes a very significant season in the life of Israel. First of all, here, they are now moving from the wilderness, still in the season of, of, of Passover, into the promised land. They have crossed Jordan. And they are, God commands Joshua, circumcise all the people that were not circumcised. And Joshua, because throughout the journeys of Moses, no one was circumcised. Throughout their journey in the wilderness, no one was circumcised. Apart from those who were circumcised in Egypt, no one was circumcised. It seems the leadership of Moses had a, a, a issue with circumcision. Because if we look at the life of the man Moses, even when God called him and he was leaving to go to answer the call, leaving the house of his, his, his father-in-law, Jethro, I was going to answer the call of God in Egypt. The Bible says God had to appear and almost killed him because his sons were not circumcised. His wife had to be the one to do the circumcision. And here again, we see the people he's leading. Almost all the people under his leadership were not circumcised. May the Lord purge us of any kind of weakness. That though we be strong, the weakness sticks with us. Any weakness that we have learned to use, to work, to manage in our work with the Lord. May the Lord bring us to that point where there is nothing, we don't need to manage a weakness. But the Lord deals with it. That our weakness will not become what, especially for those of us that are called into the place of leadership, that our personal weaknesses will not become, you know, a spot in the life of those that are following us. May the Lord purge us of every weakness in the name of Jesus Christ. So now in this new leadership, God begins to give a command. He said, Joshua, circumcise. And Joshua began to circumcise everybody. And it was after they were, as they celebrated Passover, the thing that one of the things we we'll note there is that the Bible says the manna ceased. We know that while they were in the wilderness, there was a rain of manna. They, there was their eating was rationed. They experienced manna, you know, because they were in the wilderness, it's not a place where you could farm and so rationing. But this Passover marked the end of the days of rationing. And they began to eat. The Bible said they began to eat the, the new corn of the land. And their feet stepped into the land, marking the end of the days in the wilderness and the beginning of entering into the promised land. And I see that this Passover, there are things that we have dreamt about, things we have heard about, things the Lord has told us, I will do this, I will do that, I will do that. We are moving from the days of promises into the days of manifestation. From the days of visions and revelations into the days of fulfillment of God's counsel. And because of that, God begins to make rash. Where we used to experience things like ration, we notice a change in provision pattern. And this is one of the, the, the things we see that God used. Passover became like a marker. That, ah. The way God deals with us. And it's not only provision. We begin to notice a change in dealings. A change in the way God spoke. A change in the way God deals with us. We begin to see all those changes. Praise the Lord. The next Passover we see is um, something I, I saw in 2 Chronicles 35, 8. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Now, here we see... After Israel had become a nation, somewhere in the history of Israel, there was a king that rose up, King Josiah, one of the last good kings of Israel. 
And the Bible says he kept a Passover. And in the book of Chronicles, a commentary was being run about his Passover. Now, there had been other Passovers. It's mentioned here that there were two people that were, that were mentioned here keeping Passovers that were unique. They call them high Passovers. Passovers like no other. First of all, it is mentioned Samuel, Samuel the prophet. And they mentioned how the only Passover that can be compared to the kind of Passover that Josiah kept was the Passover of, of Samuel the prophet. And, you know, I, 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 it was our apostle, apostle Adams that brought this to my, you know, to my um, notice that, see, two Passovers. One, the Passover that was kept during the time of um, Samuel and the Passover that were kept during the time of Josiah. Why is it that these two Passovers are highlighted? Why? Because they mark significant seasons in the history of Israel. Samuel marks the end of the judges. We know that after Israel became a nation, Israel never had a king. God raised judges at one time or the other to be the ones to lead them, to be the ones to be like the voice of God, the guidance of God for them. They had laws, but there was no king. So judges were ruling, one judge after the other, and Samuel was the last judge. The Bible says there was a high Passover. And what? why was there a high Passover? Heaven was announcing the end of an era. The era of judges. Oh, Israel, the era of judges is ending. And a new era is beginning. Just like the era of bondage. God had told uh, uh, the, uh, Abraham, no of a shorty, that your people, will, your children, your inhabitants, they will be in a land of bondage for 400 years. And when the time came for that era to end, you see, Passover marks the end of the lifespan of a prophecy and the beginning of the lifespan of a new prophecy, a new dispensation, a new move. And then he said, this time is the end of the judges and the beginning of kings. The beginning of kings. And we see Samuel, the last judge. Samuel was the one that ended up anointing Saul. Samuel also anointed David. And from there, kings began to rule Israel. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is saying a new era is coming. A new era is coming in the church. God will begin to do new things in his body. Old voices that are ready to fed will be going out. And new voices will be taking their place. There are certain moves that we used to know that God has said it is over. And new moves will begin. New wineskin. It calls for a time of putting new wineskin on. Because you cannot have New wine in old wine skin. There is a release of a new wine. New voices. The way the spirit of God is moving. And people that are wise must know that alignment is very required. Very important. One man that was very sensitive to the move of the spirit was a man Samuel. He knew that the time of judges was over and the time of kings had come. Do you know that when Goliath came and was challenging Israel, Samuel was still alive. Samuel never fought Goliath. This is the same Samuel that offered up sacrifice. And when he up, offered up sacrifice, the entire the hand of the Lord was strong against the Philistines. Samuel was alive, but he never fought Goliath. Saul was alive. He had anointed Saul king. He never fought. God had to anoint another king. Do you know the seasons? It is a time for us to begin to ask the Lord, what is a new era? That is showing up. How do you want to fight now? Praise the Lord. So that Passover, Samuel's Passover, marked the end of the judges. And the man too was handed over to kings. And God began to demonstrate his power using the kings. And when we look at that, compare that with the Passover of Josiah, which is where we just read now. Josiah was the last righteous king in Israel. And what was he marking? The end of the reign of kings. And after kings finish reigning in Israel, we begin to see prophets show up. Of course, after Josiah, Israel went into captivity. 
prophets began to take over. So what am I saying? Pastor Waisisu is telling us that, see, the Lord is announcing a new era. A new era is born. A new era is born. A new era is born. And moreover, Passover is a judgment. Passover, when God declared Passover, if from the very inception, it was, it was coming with judgment. And it was a judgment so severe that Israel, the only thing, the angel that was being sent, it was like, wipe every, everything out that is a firstborn. The only thing that will make you to be spared is if the angel sees the blood on the lampstand. If the, the angel sees the, the blood on the doorpost, on, on the lintel, the angel will pass over, the angel of death. Let's look at um, another scripture on Passover. I, I even saw in Luke chapter 2, verse 41, when we, we know the story of our Lord Jesus Christ, how at 12 he went to the temple. The Bible says it was at Passover. It was during the Passover feast. In fact, his ministry, you see a lot of Passover, you know, before, during Passover, you see him do certain things. We're going to just leave that and we're going to go to one more thing I saw in the book of Luke. Luke chapter, John chapter 18 verse 39. John 18, 39. John chapter 18 verse 39. This is during um, the trial of our Lord Jesus Christ. John 18, 39. But he have, let me start from verse 38. Pilate said unto him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Verse 39. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Passover is a time of release. A time of release. And we see here, it release had become a custom that is attached, associated with Passover. At this point, I want us to take a prayer point. I don't know if you have a family member, somebody that is bound in something. Somebody that is held in captivity. A prison yard that has said, we will not let this one go. Can we just tell the Lord, it is Passover. We have a custom. The Bible says, lose him and let him go. Oh Lord, can you just begin to call that name before the Lord? Ayala bebe as kaveruza, akia baba alavia. There's a cross that hangs over the earth, alavia. There's a blood that flowed from Emmanuel's side, lia kobetara. And the Bible says, by His blood He has set free the prisoner from the pit wherein there is no water. La kaba baba baba aske beruza, ella bragadaya ve kutabana by the blood of Lamb, by the blood of a lamb, by the blood of Jesus. La Krabata Yeke Mosiah. And they overcame by the blood of a lamb and by the word of their testimony. Lord, we make a demand tonight. We make a demand. Dala Kuvataya. Ebregeba Askovena Kaba. Erebedebe, Erebedebe, Erebedebe. Let the captives be set free. Arabakwa. For this reason, the Son of Man was made manifest that he may destroy all the works of the enemy. La Kotama Eve Kupayana. Ebrege Dakabadabaya. All kinds of captivity. All kinds of bondage. As a cote berana, we make that demand in the name of Jesus. Let the chains be broken, let the yoke be destroyed. Let the captives be set free from every nation of the world. La goma da ba 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 ba. We open the prison gate. Ale koma abria nakaya. Ereka ba 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 ba. Ala bregesua. Ereke ba agabadoshke. Embra la kaba ba. Kavina Oh la baya casina maya Abroga saza ba 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 atala me koshua hela braga da ba ba osobarata he bregeta askiba oskobaranaya Oh thank you Jesus You know when I prayed the first prayer uh, at the beginning I saw an open door 
Immediately I closed my eyes, I was asking the Lord, I saw a door open. And I, I have a sense in that there is an announcement of the beginning of an era, an era of a move of the Spirit like has not been seen before. And we are about to enter an acceleration. An acceleration. Makeva Oh, thank you, Jesus. La Kamasabaroshko Basaya. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I saw like a loudspeaker. And that loudspeaker was given to Apostle Adams. Apostle Adams. And I hear that your work is about to enter that dimension of spreading exponentially. Your work exponentially. We're entering that time when you will not know the people that are publishing the work. You will not know who is spreading it. You will not know who is publishing it. Mila Kosavia na Kasia. The days when the things that have been sown in your life will begin to manifest. We have entered that era, that season. That season of announcement. That season of announcement. That season of announcement. Those who have been mocked for my sake. Kaliasa. Those whom they have spoken all kinds of words against you. For my sake, Apalatia, I have numbered your tears. I have numbered your tears. And the day of pay has come. Maris Cavero Salavina. Ayakabababababa Asela Matua. Embra Katabe Askeberus Cavena. Ambese Kebaba Alavisa. Alaskiana. And I'll begin to place pure oil upon your head. Agisalamaya, and I will make you like pearls, pearls, pe precious pearls. La taka be escapana, hilambra naka, and I will go before you and announce to everyone, this one is my own. La gasebaya, ebra gasandara matigayana. Oh, blessed be your name. Now hear the Lord say, I have commanded the wells to begin to release water. The wells that were kept for such a time as this. The wells will begin to release their allocations. The wells will begin to release their allocations. The wells will begin to release their allocations. And also, there will be swift judgments. Swift judgments. There will be redemptive judgments. And there will be judgments, redemptive judgments for people that the Lord has warned many times. Many times. Many times. In dreams, in visions, in revelations, through prophets, through voices. There will be swift judgments. Judgments to redeem them. I saw, I saw like a rod plucked out of the fire. Plucked out of the fire. Karasi Mayana, Lebros Kavena Taeva. That rod will bear the mark that it went through fire. But God's mercy plucked it out of that fire. Kale Sembra no Kavetua, Hela Baba Baba Baba. And the Lord said, There are people in my house, Salia Kama, sons and daughters, who have warned over and over about certain issues. I will begin to use judgment to redeem them. I will begin to begin to use judgment to redeem them. Malisa Kovenataya. Iga Saberus Kavana. And then for those who were never a part of the fold, who are working for the enemy. La Kasema Rus Kavana. The Lord says they will see the fear of the Lord. Rata Kasi Katua. Ilambra Nakosiva Rakataya. The Lord will begin to judge falsehood. Judge lies. Kai Isabreno Kavina. I saw exposure. Zalindra Yakama. 
people who want to hide things. Let no one see. One of the judgments I saw was a judgment of exposure. Opening up of hidden things. Lebra gasandere masaya. Mengrados kaba aseke doshko bragazaya. Emma sala ba 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 aye koma sandra malia. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the prospering of ministries that are sent to the body. We have entered the we have entered the era of the prospering of ministries that are sent to the body, kingdom ministries. People that God that give ministry to the body. They are not church, but they are sent to churches. The Lord say, I will begin to exalt their horns. Kalamina Tava. And I see the oil that was reserved for such a time as this. The Lord say, bring out the reserved oil. And begin to pour on their hair. That peculiar oil. The oil that will make the church begin to recognize those. These voices have labored behind the scene. They were never recognized by the churches. The Lord said the hour has come when voices, ministries that are sent to the body, Kama I will make their voice clear and strong. Markesa. They will be like the voice of a trumpet and the body of Christ will listen to them. Magela visa Roman Telavina. I will give them such wisdom. Marato Kabe Aferu Kataya. But the body will listen. The body will listen. The body will listen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I will cause their work to prosper. I will cause their work to prosper. Thank you, Father. Oh, can we just bless the Lord? Raka Basia. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Baka Saka Doshavia. Araka Baba 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 Asela Badoshko Brianaga. Araka Baba Aiba Lavisa Gabanaya. Ebrege Saba Baba 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 Alla Soverata. Agraba Asaga Baba Agabadoshko Vereke Toske Baranadi. Yaka Baba Aliba Tuka Baba Akaberadu. Ingrama 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 Aske Baraba. Batua, Ereke Baba, Agaba Daba, Agaba Daba, Agaba Daba, Oscoveriana, Araka Baba, Agaba, 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 Asiba, Araka Baba, Agaba, Rusa Babalia, O Shamaya Karasiana, Abraka Baba, 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 Emma Kayara na mama maya kabano so baba iga padosha. Habragata baba agaba dosho barana. Habragata baba baba agaba usuba agaba usuba baria. Hegra baba agaba usana. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I see. I'm, I'm trying to understand what I'm seeing. But I know that what I am about to say has to do with the error that is being born. It looks like the era of apostles and prophets. A kind of combination that has not been seen before. Kamela Tikaya. In the body. Kameleve Susi Kabana Tekayaba. Lubrene Kasambe. The ministry of the prophet and the ministry of the apostle. La Kesarababa Sekoya. And the correction of foundations. That the glorious church, a glorious church may emerge again. By the work of the apostle, by the work of the prophet. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. 
give you praise. I give you praise. I see the number 24. I see the number 24. You know, so that Passover and 24. The number 24. Just, you know, being highlighted. The number 24. Being highlighted very strong. The number 24. Standing out very strong. And as it were, saying this is one of the high Passovers. 2024 Passover is one of the high Passovers. Salina na komeme labreno kafina kaya. Like the Passover kalia some ravi kataya. Orame kataya ikamelebe sanda. Orabe kapa papa pa asebrege toshko vasaya. Hmm. I hear the fullness of time. The fullness of time. I believe there will be deeper interpretations. Maybe when, you know, Prophet Paul takes over. Deeper inter interpretations. But I know I see that number 24. Standing. Standing. I feel that we should still pray again. For everyone that is bound. Cities that are bound. Especially people who are sons and daughters of covenant. People are held in all kinds of captivity. You know, people that people of God. Ah, the Bible says, Ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound these seven years, be set free on the Sabbath day? Can we just begin to speak? Apamoyada, everyone that is a daughter of Zion, everyone that is a son of Zion, Iyasakata, that you were bound by the, by the enemy, bound by the enemy. Ayakaba, we release you, we release you, we release you, we release you by the hand. Of God, la kaba ba 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 askaberuna aya ba 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 akabelavina aya ba ba can the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? Even the prey of the terrible shall be taken and the lawful captive delivered. Lord, contend on this high Passover. Contend against the enemy. Contend against the gates of hell in this high Passover. Let your people be set free into their calling, into their destiny. Allah command into their inheritances la bragada da aka peruja ela bragada pa 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 aka mia mosava e abrama aya kerege urata pa 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 aka biadaka e reke pa 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 ala bikanosha e mereka pa 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 aya bado kobianaga oh yes lord la kaba saza le mosavi atakaya mm Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I hear unique ministries. Unique ministry, like the church has never seen before. Unique Pamuma na Feruma. Lankuma Dave Kurana. Do you know there are people that they are, their ministry prospers in time of warfare? They are called to enter into the battlefield, enter to places where war is raging. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There will be city of refuges in the places where warfare rages. They will be like a sanctuary. Kaya malakata barakaiza. Inside of the fire. La koba baba esko ferenaya. They will be mobile tabernacles carrying the presence of God. Carrying hope. Carrying love. Kade basaya. Carrying the peace of God. That doesn't make sense. Lembro na kavina, out of their palms shall flow a light that brings healing, healing in the midst of darkness. A kaleno kopa afikotaya, and he say, I'm looking for vessels that have been consecrated. Mia kafanda, for the hour has come, the time is full. The anointing will be poured forth. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Even in our midst. And I hear the Lord say, I will bring strange people your way. I believe this word is for, for Paul. I am about to begin to bring your way. Strange people. People that the church will never believe in what I've put in them. But I'll give you an eye that can see beyond what man sees. Saliakafenoza. Ayekemo sandayana. I will help you to find your ministry in scriptures. People that the church will call outcasts. Karasinaya. 
And I will cause you to gather the outcasts together. Labe Kofera, rejected by the world, rejected by the church. I will give you, Leah Commander, a unique grace to gather the outcasts and out of the outcasts raise sons and daughters for the Lord. People who will become saviors. Saviors. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Can we pray for this ministry? Can we ask the Lord, release your wisdom. Release your grace. Release, increase our capacity. I hear Isaiah 54. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch for the cuttings of your habitation. Spear not. Lengthen your stakes and straighten your cords. For you shall break forth on the right hand side. And on the left, your... Lord, enlarge our hearts. Fill us with the love of Christ. Fill us with the love of... Give us an eyes that sees beyond color. The eyes that do not see language. We will not see the brokenness of men. We will be committed to the assignment. Committed to the end. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I hear this word and I believe for Sister Diana. It says, redeeming love. Redeeming love. Redeeming love. And I see her hands. Like the hand of a potter, stained with wet clay. Kasiva tozi anaka, ningro na fesi kanandere maya. Stained with wet clay, akapaya na tava. And he says, my spirit will rest upon your hands and teach you how to mold wet clay. And out of clay, glass will come out. Tasi kofe kataba ma enos kapera. Labra nakaya. Even the most broken, even the most broken, even the most broken can be mended, can be repaired, can be fixed, can be transformed by the anointing of God. Redeeming love, redeeming love. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. I hear the word new streams. New streams. The Lord says to every one of us, to every one of us, when you begin to see a new stream flowing by the Spirit, a new stream, take time to give attention to what the Lord is doing. When you begin to see new streams in your life, new stream of oppression, new stream of administration, makivina tuzika pana, Take note of it. Take note of it. Take note of it. Be careful to take note of it. Oh, see la brakataya. Because I hear the Lord, just like he was giving instructions in the days of Joshua. He said, watch the ark. You do not know. I'm about to lead you in a path that you have no used to. Baliza. You've not passed this path before. You've not passed. Therefore, fix your eyes on the ark. Fix your eyes on the ark. I will do new things. New things. Oh, blessed be your name, our King. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I hear in my spirit, I hear in my spirit, the Lord is bringing to an end. There are people who have gone through seasons of scarcity. It was like a wilderness season. And the Lord is saying, just like the manna ceased. The days of rationing came to an end. And Israel began to eat from the land. That is about to bring men into their inheritances. We are about to begin to enter our inheritance. Our inheritance. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, I give you praise. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Over to you, sir. Brother Paul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Thank you so much, sir, for allowing the Lord um, use you the way he has. I have been greatly blessed, and I know everyone joining us today has been greatly blessed, and we receive every promise and every word that has come forth from the mouth of the Lord, and we thank God for how he has used his servant. And if you joined us on Monday, you would notice that we are certain words that were shared, prophetic words that were shared on Monday that have been confirmed today. God is doing a great work. God is doing a great work and he has also confirmed his word today and he has brought for that insight and for that intel regarding the new season that we've, we are entering this season because we are in, in a phase of transition. One season is ending and another is beginning. And while God's servants was, was wrapping up, I, I saw something and I saw in the hand of prophet Hope a hammer and the head of the hammer had two sides. And these two sides of the head of the hammer were, of, were for different purposes. One part was shaped as a tip, and that tip was to plant, to make holes and plant. And then the other part was sharp and was to break. And the scripture that came to my heart then in the vision was Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. What the Lord is saying is that he, he's unveiling and he's opening up that aspect of the ministry of Jeremiah that relates to your call and he's opening that up and i believe that in this season that is opening up and that operation will begin to take place at a much more higher frequency where we would see uprooting and where we will see planting where we will see destroying and where we will see building according to the plan of god and according to the counsel of god and so father we thank you for your servants we thank you father for how you have used your servant to bless us tonight we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor amen just before I carry on, I'd like to call on Pastor Adam Salisin, my father and the Lord. I believe he has a few things to share before I carry on. Praise God. Good evening, all. God bless you, Prophet Hope. And thanks for that prophetic session, Prophet Hope. That was a powerful session. I was really blessed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. For bringing those words. I just want to speak a bit about that Passover. And 24 that you saw. Uh, I believe there are three things God is, uh, amongst other things, that God is emphasizing that this season is going to shift into the 24 there, just like the 24 elders in the book of Revelation. I believe there's a picture that they represent of apostles and prophets. Hmm. 12 apostles, 12 prophets in the Old Testament, they happen to be 12 minor prophets. And the New Testament will have 12 apostles. So I believe that God is speaking to us about that. Of course, that does not mean that, that, that those are the people who occupy the 24 thrones in heaven. That's not what I'm referring. I'm just saying that in a prophetic sense, that's what God is showing. And God is saying is raising this company of prophets and apostles across the globe. Their numbers might be 24, it might be more. But God is raising a company of people around the nations of the earth and from amongst our midst. That's a prophetic company here. And also from Pitchman Academic Center and other centers that God is raising, the Franklin Center and other churches, but God is raising prophetic and apostolic ministries so that He can restore the balance and the order of the church as it was from the beginning. The way God starts a thing is the way God wants the thing, and it's the way God ends a thing. Hmm. He started with prophets and apostles, He wants to end a prophet and apostles. The Old Testament is predominantly prophet. New Testament predominantly apostles. God is speaking of that kind of restoration again. Secondly, the second characteristic is all the same, but let's break it into this so that we have some clarity of what God is saying, of what I am perceiving God is saying from this uh, picture that you saw of Passover and 24. By shifting into an era, not only are we going to see the apostles and prophets with great capacity and great caliber rise on the surface of the earth across the globe, they will occupy a realm of authority hmm. like the council in Jerusalem. Like the council in Jerusalem. Now, the council in Jerusalem occupy a strategic position. They were the ones who were able to stem error from the church. Hmm. So, when people, charlatans and ignorant people rise up and speak uh, foul doctrines and it is causing trouble in the body of Christ, everybody will simply say, send them to the council. This council may be one, may be many. That is not my prerogative to know. But I know that the Lord is raising this kind of council so that when there is such error or such contention in the body of Christ, there are people of stature, people who have the 
pulling at the capacity. They, they have the what, what I call the stamp of the white lion that they can rally to to confirm these things, whether they be true or false. You know, you go to uh, social media, you see a lot of these errors when a false prophet or somebody who is not balanced into say something erroneous, the comment section, those who did not believe that thing before, because the person speaking is their pastor, they now begin to support it. Hmm. That will end because a recognition, God is going to put his, his seal upon this council or this set of council on the earth of prophets and apostles and elders that when people see them, they will recognize. In fact, in the book of Revelation, the all people who occupy the throne are apostles and elders, the patriarchs of old, and the apostles also occupy the 12 thrones, the 24 thrones in heaven. And the book of Acts, chapter uh, 15, the people who were in the council were called elders and apostles. I believe that God is showing us again that picture that is the council that He's raising, He's raising this council over the earth again so that He can regulate um, uh, uh, the gates of truth to and from the body of Christ. Lastly, they represent a, a heavenly council, which means what they bind on earth would have been bound in heaven, mm -hmm. and what they lose on earth would have been loosed in heaven. And that is a, a, a greater sphere of authority that God is releasing to his body in this season. There is a Passover into this, in this season. And may the Lord help us to align with his will and purposes so that we can see the manifestations of these things, not just in the earth, but also in our lives. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful apostolic perspective. And while Prophet Hope shared the words about 24 and then the elders, the impression that came to my heart was that of the apostles and the prophets that God is raising and which confirmed what the apostle just shared, even as we listened, just to let us know that the spirit is one and God is confirming his word. And while Prophet Hope was also ministering, there was something else that I saw. I saw a huge truck. Now, what was happening is that tables were being dismantled I saw the I saw the I saw the earth. There was a huge field, and tables were now being dismantled. Now these tab tables all had four legs. Most tables have four legs, except for those that have maybe three legs or five legs, depending on what what the table is used for. But these tables they all had four legs, and the four legs of each table was being removed. And after each table was dismantled, they were moved into the truck. They were moved into the truck. And this work went on and on. There were so many tables that were being dismantled by the angels that I saw who mounted that particular truck and they were loading the truck. Remember from what the Lord has spoken to us about this very season, we're in a season of transition. We're in a season of transition and the theme that the Lord has given us to capture today's meeting is Passover. And so we are moving from one season to another season and there is a lot that of realignments and shifts that are currently taking place in the realm of the spirit. And the vision that I just shared is one of them. And what does it mean? Each table had four legs. Each table had four legs. And each table was from and of the old order. There are four legs, and those four legs represent four things. Where they wine, where they dine, where they meet, and where they work. You eat on the table, you eat and drink on the table, the dining table, and then you walk on the table, you meet on the table. And these are the four words that the Lord gave me to capture the four legs of the table that were being dismantled. And it is a work of judgments that the Lord is doing. And speaking of judgments, earlier today I was, I was doing a study on, on bronze fetters, on bronze fetters. And if you check your Bible, you would see that it occurs six times. I usually prefer to study with the NKJV. And so it, it, it occurs six times. And for each of those six times, it had to do with judgment. It had to do with the judgment of God being executed. And while Prophet Hope was ministering, the Lord brought that word again, the bronze fetters. So there is a measure of judgment that the Lord would also be doing 
at the right now on the terrain, even as we're seeing those tables being taken away, there's a measure of judgment, even as Prophet Hope spoke about, there's a measure of judgment that is taking place on falsehood. And so the Lord is taking away their tables where they wine, where they dine, where they meet, where they walk. Their structures would be dismantled in this season and they will no longer have voices and they will no longer be relevant in the airspace. And the operation of the bronze fetters will swing into action. The bronze fetters that represent captivity or affliction resulting from the judgment of God. If you check all the six places where you find it in the Bible, right from the book of Judges, in the story of Samson, down to the kings, Manasseh, Zedekiah, and the likes, it was all the same thing. The judgment of God being executed. And in this season, that judgment of God will go to the next gear. It has been taking place before now, but there is a shift. There is a shift in what? There is a shift and acceleration in that work of judgment that the Lord is doing. Even as I'm speaking right now, I am seeing a vision. And in this vision, what I'm seeing is that I, 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 see, I see an angel going through, going through individuals and um, the angel was asking, well, was asking them to look at their wristwatch. And so they, they turned their wrist and then they were checking their time. And for each person where you did not have um, the two hands of the wristwatch on 12 o'clock, that is just the two hands like that aligned at 12, they were put aside. Even though the deviation was just a little bit, like maybe five minutes or a few minutes to, to the right or to the left, they were put aside. And then for as many... Whose, whose wristwatches all pointed north. The two arms of the wristwatch, the hour hand and then the minute hand, pointed north. Those ones remained in the middle while the rest were taken to the sides. And what the Lord is saying is that I, I, am, I am rewarding alignment. I am rewarding alignment. I am rewarding alignment. There are, there are many who have been aligned with the Lord. And this word is also confirming what the prophet of God has said. There are many who have been aligned with the Lord in the previous seasons of their lives. The Lord is saying to you that you have now entered a season of rewards. Even as we pass over, you're passing over from, from that season of just laboring to that season of rewards. The Lord says that he will be rewarding alignment. He will be rewarding alignment. And he's also saying that for as many that he puts aside because of misalignment, out of his mercy and out of his grace, he's given three months. He's given three months. He's given three months, three months of grace, a three months grace period. And this grace period of three months is for as many who have been misaligned to come back to that place of alignment. And he says that within those three months and at the end of those three months, I will come and I will do another evaluation. And I will see if as many who were not aligned, who were misaligned, have returned to the place of alignment. If they do, then they shall experience their own Passover. One of the things that we know about the Lord is that he is merciful. He is not just merciful, but he is rich in mercies. He is rich in mercies. So what the Lord has just done is that he has now given another grace period to as many that miss this portal, this open door of transition and of Passover. And I hear the Lord also saying, beat the drums, sound the alarm, beat the drums, sound the alarm, because it is time, it is time for the change of garments. It is time for the change of guards, and it is time for the change of memberships. Sound the alarm, beat the drums, it is time for the change of garments, it is time for the change of guard, and it is time for the change of memberships.
change of God because the God has been changed in the spirit and what has been changed in the spirit will begin to unfold in the natural in this season. A change of garments because as many that have, have had that spirit of heaviness, that spirit of heaviness and have been sad and have been down and have been discouraged shall begin to experience the joy of the Lord. The spirit of heaviness shall be replaced with the garments of praise. And so new garments, garments of praise, garments of praises, they are coming upon as many that have been despondent and as many that have been discouraged and as many that have grown weary out of oppression, out of suffering and out of challenges. And change of memberships for cases and for platforms where where leaders have been troubled and plagued by unserious people and unserious individuals that have sought to twat the work of God in their hands. He's saying, if I've called you to start up a work and those that ought to help, refuse to help, in this season of transition, in this season of Passover, I will begin to raise up stones to take their place. I will begin to raise up stones to take up their place. I'll begin to raise up stones to take up their place. And these stones shall be living stones. These stones shall be living stones. These ones shall carry a grace, an aura, and an anointing and an unction that shall cause my work to go into that mode of acceleration because I have said that you are entering a season of acceleration. The Lord is also speaking to Page Master Apostolic Center and he says that your seasons of travail is over. Your warfares are ended and I am bringing succor as promised. I am bringing relief as promised. I am bringing succor as promised. I am bringing relief as promised. Not one word that I have said to you, not one word that I have said to you shall fail. Every single word that has been written concerning the ministry concerning the work that I've placed into my servant, Apostle Adam Salison, not one word shall fail. Every single one shall come to pass. And I see a band of angels that, that have been activated to cause each word to come to pass. I see a band of angels that have been activated to cause each word and each promise to come to pass. This season of Passover is also a season of metamorphosis. There is a change of wineskin currently taking place. There is a change of wineskin currently taking place. And the Lord is calling many of us. He's calling us all to come up higher. He's calling us to come up higher because he's saying that the new wine that I pour out in this season cannot be contained with the former wineskins. And I ask that you change your wineskins that you change your wineskins, that you may be able to have that capacity to contain and to carry that which I am releasing in this season. Because I am giving new wine, I am giving fresh wine. New wine, fresh wine, straight from the vine. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give God praise for his word. Let's thank him for today. Let's thank him for his promises. Let's thank him for his promises. Kai no ma son no so brana taka bahida. Kai gobera na shanda brana vata kabahida. Kai ko sa tai ke le ne mara namasha. Thank you, Father, for your word. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Masse kombrani feno shkaidana sete kobera vigo bele shano he kai gida kadaso brodoko viata agushki bande vembro non vembrantos ke komis kainomba eshkombri vibai dos shudubi krege kano palandas kai bive kombri di felano son skombri dish kai kai tono basala taika sabani teko. I come this kumbrivia lebo koto kozaka dekreka jana kaidaba jido veda brado soko jada kabahida 
Akai Koskowski do Vrisko Miniki Kaino Zisis Komefa Maito Me Kinangobeno. Thank you. Thank you, Father. We bless your name, Jesus. We glorify you. Amen. Just a couple of more words from the Lord, and then I would open the floor for anyone that has anything to share. Self-deceit is the worst form of deceit. Self-deceit is the worst form of deceit. And the reason I say this is because I, I just saw in a vision that the Lord was bringing deliverance from deception. He was, he was, he, he's bringing deliverance from deception. And many times when you are deceived, you may, you may not even know that you are deceived. At, at other times, it may just be you deceiving yourself. You know the truth and then you're, 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 you're running away from it or you're trying to avoid it because of the idols in your heart. And the Lord is saying that I am bringing deliverance from deception. I am bringing deliverance from deception. I am cursing, I'm cursing the eyes that have been veiled to be opened. I am cursing the eyes that have been veiled by deception to be opened. And you shall have no excuse. You shall have no excuse. You shall have no excuse. There is someone currently listening to me. You are shoveling this, you're shoveling this word. You're shoveling this word. And the Lord is speaking to you. He says, look to yourself. He says, look to yourself. Look to yourself. Don't shovel it. Look to yourself. Look to yourself. He says, I am bringing deliverance. I am bringing deliverance from deception. I see scales. I see scales falling off eyes. And, and I see camera lenses being recalibrated. I see camera lenses being, being recalibrated. They are being recalibrated. And what is happening is that the Lord is, is bringing deliverance from deception. And then he's bringing recalibration to sight in the spirit, sight in the spirit, and, and, and not just sight in the spirit, but the way we relate with the issues of life. Now, when we see, we'll see properly. When we see, we'll see how he expects us to see. And he also says, finally, and that you shall have no excuse. You shall have no excuse. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Concerning the season of transition that we are currently in, and the Lord is saying that even in this time of Passover, he, he gives me two words. He calls it goal setting. He calls it goal setting. He, he calls it goal setting. And then he says, concerning the work that I have entrusted into your hands, concerning the assignments that I have given you, concerning what I have called you to do, begin to set goals. Look at the prophetic words that have gone ahead of you. Look at the prophetic words that I have given you about the work and begin to set goals. Begin to set goals. Begin to set goals because I am ready and I am set to bring that which I have spoken concerning you to pass, even as you begin to enter this new season, even as you begin to enter this new phase. Map out all that I have said to you and set goals. Map out all that I have said to you and set goals and present them before me because I need something from you to work with. You have been passive long enough. You have been passive long enough. Map out the words that I have spoken to you. Compare your notes. Compare everything that I have been speaking to you concerning the work that I have entrusted into your own hands and map these things out. As you map them out, set goals, set goals. Present them to me and leave the rest to me, says the Lord. Present them to me and leave the rest to me. The Lord wants us to, he, he wants us to begin to take action with instructions that have been given, with words that have been shared, with promises that have been made, with, with words that, are, that have been spoken concerning his purpose, concerning us. And this word that I'm speaking about, it, it is specifically, I'm not talking about one assignment here, one assignment. I'm speaking about the purpose of God for you, what he has called you to do, what he has entrusted into your own hands to do. He says, bring the words together, map them out, set goals, present them to me, and leave the rest for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Even as we begin to wrap up, I'll just open the floor. If anyone has anything to share, you have the floor. Amen. Amen. While we prayed, like where we first started, I'm just just a confirmation of the word about the judgment of falsehood. I saw a vulture 
and we know that like vultures are you know people who were initially called but they've strayed off the path and now they are basically false prophets so i saw a vulture whose neck was ringed like you know how you ring the neck of a chicken and you like squeeze it and so that's that's that was what i saw and i guess the words that followed just confirmed it so that's that hallelujah thank you for sharing anyone else Amen. Glory to God. Even as we begin to wrap up, I would like us to take one prayer point and then we'll give God thanks and close. One prayer point and this prayer point is simple. Lord, may I not miss it. It's just that simple. Lord, may I not miss it. Because it is it is possible for us to come to the appointed time and we'll be like the be like be like the virgins, be like the foolish virgins who were just there sleeping and then uh, they had no extra oil and then everything was a mess. And then they had to they had to leave at night to go and get oil and things like that. And then the bridegroom came. That is that is not what God wants for us. And I'd like us to begin to pray that we will not miss it, that we will not miss the open door that the Lord has set before us. Even as we're in a season of transition, we will not be like them that were pushed aside because they were not in alignment, that we will be aligned and that every instruction that is required for us to transition shall be obeyed. Is there any way we are failing? Is there any way we are missing it? That our eyes shall be open, that our eyes shall be open, that we shall not miss it. I'm going to be zozobata. Vako sheka la do bela takabahida. Ezishi ko balande kreke jadike bekoto ko bere na kaziza. Eja de vak makle kreke jake faka to soko fekete shike pa. Kabaka bashoto ko vele kabaka vaka to soko baka vaka diya na 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 sata kabahida. Eja kahike daka basoto ko vida kabahida. Kizaka nde mongo bera na tasakaji de vaka doko bera ta. Zusu su zubi ta ike te la na 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 na. Kila kabashota. Eko ba kabashoto ko veta kabada ta takahida kabahida. We come before you Jesus to ask for help. We ask father for help. We ask father for help. We ask father for help. Makaigi da kajon no beka baka do feta kabahida. Help us, Father, not to miss, not to miss our hour of visitation. Help us, Father, not to miss our hour of visitation. Help us, Father, not to miss our hour of visitation. Are there hidden instructions? Are there instructions that have been veiled before now that we have been oblivious to? We ask, Father, that our eyes be opened. Let my eyes be opened. Open. Let our eyes be open, O oh God, to every outstanding order, every outstanding instruction from your spirit, from your heart that is yet to be obeyed. Makope kaboko to kobaka takata kabahida. Jaka zaso bede veta kazadata. Ejano krubel kove taka jaka haka dia. Every di shaka dekre kezana taka bara de baba baba sata. Ejano kobaka vano kojanka dek legre kezese kiboko to veke tekiba. Ejako beta kobela na 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 so kobela. Ejano vede kre kezese kabasho to koba. It is our heart cry and our prayer, O oh God, that none of us shall miss our hour of visitation, that none of us, O oh God, shall miss the mark, that none of us, O oh God, shall miss the open door. That the open door of access that you have granted us in this season to transition from this phase to the next, that we all shall enter, we all shall enter, we all shall enter fully. Ma sombi kena ma shande kreke ziata e sheko bate vata kaja kata kadiata e vredi a shakai de brede veka daka bakoso kuvaka taka bahida zise kreke shana taka bahida kapa e zebe de bede 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 shaka baka vaka to soko baka vaka diaka daka bahida kira na ma sondo ko jeke feke te siki feke te siki baka vaka daka bahida zisa kajika deko boko tu feke te siki baka daka hida zese brede fe shaka hida kabara na ma soko veka kata bahida Thank you, Father. We bless you, Jesus. We glorify your name. Amen. Recall that earlier, I, I spoke about three months, according to the word of the Lord, three months, that the Lord was giving three months to as many that miss the opportunity, the current opportunity to transition to the next phase of what he wants to do, to transition out of where they have been to where he needs them to be, according to his grand design. So just now when we prayed, he, he also spoke again of three days. Three days. And this is, today is Friday, and then tomorrow is Saturday, and then next tomorrow is Sunday. 
And so he's saying that there is also the three days of grace. And if you've been following us, remember, we, we said that the 31st of March, that is the end of this month, is that time where we experience that transition. And the Resurrection Sunday, is that this time around is symbolic for us. It is, it is symbolic of that transition, that Passover that, we take place, that, that will take place in the lives of as, as many that have been following, in, in the lives of as many that are in this community and as many that, would, that choose to join us. What this now makes clear to us is that there are three flights. There is a first flight for those who are already experiencing that transition, who have, who have been in alignment. And then there is a second flight, the three-day grace period between now and Sunday. And then there is a third flight, which is the three-month grace period. So we can see how rich, this is just showing us how rich God is in mercies. So if you miss the first one, you have three days. If you miss that one, you have three months. Sometimes some open doors, some portals in the spirit, they can only open once in a lifetime or once in 20 years or once in 50 years. Sometimes you miss your hour of visitation and you set back your, your life and the fulfillment of purpose and destiny by five years, by 10 years, by 20 years. So it is important that we be aligned with the Spirit of God. And one important thing that the Lord has, that the Lord has highlighted is the aspect of instructions that are yet to be obeyed. Instructions that he has given that are yet to be obeyed. Assignments that are yet to be carried out. Work that has been left undone. These are the specific reasons why many are experiencing misalignments even in this season. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Let's just give God thanks. Let's thank him for today's meeting. Thank him, exalt him, magnify his name. Let's praise him. Let's just worship him. Thank him for today. Thank him for how he has ministered to us through Diana the Prophetess, to Prophet Hope, and, and how, how even God's servant has even come to bring the apostolic insights. Can we just give him thanks? Give him thanks for tonight. Give him thanks for this season. Give him thanks for what he's doing. Just thank him, praise him, glorify his holy name, magnify him, thank him. Thank him. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, Jesus. 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 We praise, you Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your mercies towards us. You have just shown us, oh God, that you are rich in mercies. You are rich in mercies. You're showing us, you're giving us opportunity after opportunity to get it right. We miss the mark. You give us another opportunity. We miss the mark. You still give us another opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for your rich mercies towards us. And thank you, Father, for this season of transition. Thank you, Father, for your plans, oh God, that begin to unfold. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank you all for joining us tonight. As always, take note that tomorrow being Saturday, we have the PageMaster Apostolic Center holding the PageMaster World Symposium. And we've been on the Altar of Stone series. And we're, we are having the seventh episode tomorrow. It's been a huge blessing. I encourage you to join. Check PageMaster Apostolic Center either on YouTube, on Facebook, or any other of our social media platforms and you will find the link available because it will be streamed online on multiple platforms as usual. And note that it is Page Master Apostolic Center. And the time, West African time, the Nigerian time, is 3 p.m. So you can convert that to your own time zone. And remember that Monday is the Mission Control Prayer Meeting, same time, which is 7 p.m. Eastern time. And then Friday next week, we have the Prayers for All Nations. Thank you for joining us tonight, and God bless you. Have a good night.